So I go help customers, that's what I do. Some people call premier field engineers, they're like ninjas jumping out of helicopters. So it was a Friday evening, and I should speak to the microphone over here. So it was a Friday evening, and I had just logged off for the day, getting ready to have dinner with the family. And I'd worked it out where I had two weeks at home to do some remote project work, so I didn't have to be on the road. I was really looking forward to the next two weeks. Friday evening, I sit back in my recliner, I got my comfy clothes on, and my phone rings. We have somebody called the on-duty crit sit manager. And a crit sit is kind of like we are, you guys are on call for your company, right? But we're on call for every company in the world. <laughs> All right? And I don't get those calls very often. But I got the call, and the manager says, we need you. Have you seen the news? <laughs> I said, no, I haven't looked at the news. He said, turn on your TV. Or look at the internet, whatever. So I looked at the news, and I, oh, no. So I, he says, we need you. This was Friday evening. He said, we need you on site Monday morning with the customer. Now, this customer will be unnamed. I'm not going to tell you what industry, what geography, anything about this customer. All right? because we do this on a regular basis. So I get to the customer site, I show up to this, you know, you, the standard security check-in where they give you, you your badge and all that with the security people, right? They don't have any computer. Their computers are turned off. They're handwriting name tags and writing them on a clipboard. This is the security check-in at the front desk at the company. I get, to the, I get off the elevator and there's a sign posted for all the employees that says, do not turn on your computer until further notice. <laughs> and that week, the FBI was at the company briefing employees on identity theft protection and how to guard themselves online. It was post-apocalyptic. This IT environment was pretty much cratered by hackers. And they call me to come in and say, we need you to look at the Active Directory and tell us if it's okay to bring back online. When we realized that we were breached, we started shutting down domain controllers, and we had two that were offshore in other countries where we've got the VM captured, and we've uh, taken the time of a couple days to transmit that VM over our high-speed lines to get it in an isolated lab. We want you to look at this DC and tell us if you can find any fingerprints of the hackers in the Active Directory data so we know whether it's okay to reuse this domain environment because otherwise we're building completely from Greenfield the entire company. That's kind of a big deal. I wasn't ready for that. So, Active Directory Forensics, here's our problem. How do you track malicious activity in your domain environment when you didn't have the auditing turned on? How many of you have auditing properly enabled in your Active Directory environment? That's loaded. You said the proper. Right. <laughs> properly, right? All right, about two thirds of you. So that's, that's about, uh, yeah, that's actually better than average. So uh, what our problem to solve is how do you find the footprints of what we call an actor in your environment if they're tampering with your Active Directory data and you did not properly have auditing turned on? It's a big deal. So what we're going to do is we're going to dive into just a single DC lab here and look at some things and teach you some concepts, some ways that you can uh, work with your Active Directory data and try to find some of these things. So what we're going to imagine is that you create an account, you create a group, you put the user in the group, you nest that group in domain admins somewhere to try to hide that it's not an immediate member of domain admins. You grant that account control of an OU, then you delete the account, delete the group, kind of what we would assume to be hacker activities. Now, the truth is, um, with targeted malware aimed at companies sponsored by nation states, 
Uh, they usually don't even need to create accounts because they're going to find somebody on the network that stored their password in clear text and they'll just use their accounts. So sometimes we may not, and that was part of the case at this one particular customer, the hackers didn't really need to create any extra accounts because they had already found all the passwords in, in a spreadsheet in the network. I know you guys don't do that though, that's okay. All right. Don't be that company. Don't be that company, all right? So let's, uh, let's dive into the lab here and take a look. So first off, I've staged some, in, some changes in the environment I want us to look at. And what I want to do is look at the Active Directory RIDs, relative IDs, essentially. I want to look at, in descending order, what are the most recent new accounts? that were created in the environment. Now, the scary statistic that I've heard is that the hackers have been in your network 11 months before you're even aware that they're there. So this is all best effort, really, here. But what we're going to do is we're gonna look at a list of accounts, newest accounts, from the moment we to discover the breach, we're going to look at the newest accounts and determine, do any of these look suspicious in any way? All right. So I'm going to take a look here, get AD object. Now the search base is going to be here, the path, the root of the domain. And I'm going to do a subtree search, get AD object, standard kind of deal here. And so I'm looking for... Uh, all the accounts that have an object SID. Any object in Active Directory that has a SID, that's going to be a security identifier, which would be users, computers, and groups. I'm going to pull back those types of objects. And then I'm going to put some uh, funny business calculation in here for the date of when it was created to get something that's recent. And let's see, I'm going to do result page size. We were just talking about paging here a second ago. One of the things I discovered working in this particular lab environment that they gave me was I'm working with a large data set, thousands of accounts, and the Active Directory commandlets were choking and timing out in places, so I had to put a page size, and I had to kind of play with how big the page size was, and I found that 100 was about right for the chunks of data to process. So I'm gonna pull back from those objects uh, the when created, the object SID, and some other things is deleted. And what we'll do then is we're going to actually take the object SID, which is the domain SID dash the RID, that last little bit on the SID, and just parse out the RID just for information. Uh, and it it's, doesn't have to be sequential necessarily, but we're just going to take a look at these uh, most recent accounts in the environment. And if I zoom in here with Mark's tool. <clears throat> so here we've got the objects, SID, the RID, when it was created, uh, is it deleted? And this is just looking at accounts in the last few days or the last week. So is it deleted? What type of object is it, user or group? And you can see the good guy and good guys. Those are uh, uh, the, the demo accounts that I've created for us to play with here. So they're the good guys, right. So that's uh, just a quick way to look and see uh, what's the newest accounts. Not a big deal there, just a quick query to say, all right, looking at around the point that this event happened, were there any new accounts that were created that looked suspicious? Now, how many have heard of something called admin SD holder? All right, so if you're not aware, there's a process that runs on a domain control in your PDC every hour. And anybody that's a member of those specially protected groups like account operators, backup operators, domain admins, it's going gonna, it's gonna to run a process to make sure that people in those groups haven't found some nefarious way to elevate their access and it resets their access on their accounts. So this is called the admin SD holder. Anytime you're put into a group that's nested into one of those groups, there's a flag that gets set on your account that's called admin account. So let's take a look here. Uh, so I've got a little script that's going to uh, query for this uh, property admin account. If it's set to one, then I know that's a protected group member. 
So an account that's somehow nested into another group that's nested into a privilege group that's going to be reset automatically on that hour interval. So what I'm looking for then is I'm going to uh, process through these uh, protected groups. And then for each one of those groups, I'm going to get a member list. But I'm going to do this a really special way here with something called get AD replication attribute metadata. Boy, that command lets a mouthful. Uh, this commandlet never gets old. I've been demoing this commandlet for years, and it is uh, your best friend when it comes to forensics and Active Directory. So look, before I get into the function here that I created, let's just kind of step through this a little bit. So I'm just going to pick a domain controller and give me an hours interval of 24-7. And I'm going to query get ad group where admin count is equal to 1. And then I'm going to look at my protected groups. So here's my protected group list. Print operators, replicator, backup operators. And then notice this group level one, group level two, group level three. I put this in here on purpose to show you that no matter how deep you nest the groups, these are all just nested. Group one has group two, has group three, and then group one itself is actually nested in one of these privilege groups like uh, domain admins, I believe, over here. So. Uh, we can look at those protected <coughs> groups. So now let's take a look at something called get AD replication attribute metadata on the domain admins group. Now somebody was telling me earlier today that they were they had used this commandlet but they didn't use the show all linked values. This commandlet is going to show you uh, Active Directory keeps track of what you do. And if you update any single attribute on any single object, there's a version stamp for every attribute on every object. So I can see how many times um, that one uh, lady in the company that's been married five times and her last name attribute has changed every other month, okay? I can see that it's been versioned that many times every time we had to go update the last name attribute, okay? Mm -hmm. So show all linked values, though, is especially for groups with that linked value replication I mentioned just a second ago. So it'll show me all the users that are members of those groups and when they were added to that group. So let's take a look at this particular example here. Piping everything to outgrid view, my favorite commandlet, right after import CSV. So here we go. It's, uh, it's showing me that the object category, it's a group, gives me each one of these things. There's the SID, there's the admin count, it's a special admin count is one, it's a special group. Here's the, the description and so forth, it's, it's the CN. But if I slide over here to the right, what I want you to notice, uh, let me scroll across here. I have to scroll across my view. And this is all tiny. That's the one thing I don't like about demoing out grid view. I have to scroll a lot. So last originating change time up here says this is the last time that attribute was ever changed on that object. And if I scroll all the way to the right, I'll see a version stamp. And that version stamp says how many times, one is the time when it was originally created as an object when it was born in AD, and then any increment above one is, indicates that that attribute has been changed. How many times? You know, just subtract one from it. So if I come down through here, I can see, look, there's some attributes that have been versioned significantly. So let's, let's uh, slide back over here. What I want you to see is that in this domain admins group, you can actually take a look at the members in the group. Now, you can see here's a deleted user, good guy, that I've been playing with a couple times setting up for the demo. Here's a migration account from AD migration that you had to set up. Here's Bob. Somehow Bob made it into admins. And there's group level one that has group level two and three nested inside of it. So those are members. And over here, we can see the date that they were added to domain admins. That's interesting. Then if I keep going across here, it'll show me which domain controller the update originated from. So the AD replication attribute metadata will show me the last change to every uh, attribute on an object and which domain controller initiated that and the date and time. Does that sound handy? Yeah. 
Sounds pretty handy. As long as it was the last change that we're looking for there. There's also another property over here that will tell us if it was deleted. So if the ever user was ever a member, here's a last originating delete time stamp. Uh, if we look at the t column title here, last originating delete time. And there's the value of 223, whoever that user was there, was deleted out of domain admins on that date. So we can see additions and deletions using this uh, commandlet uh, to view group memberships here. Now the one thing to, to mention is that this is linked value replication. If you've got the old school 2000, 2003, early era, the group memberships are in a blob in a member's property and it's replicated as a blob, then this doesn't apply necessarily. But with the linked value replication that we enabled in 2003 and above, you should see this. So all your new groups should be uh, seeing this. And to comment on that, if you have upgraded, you delete the members add back to the work. Right. To LVR. Right. You got to reset the group membership to, to make them LVR. So if I um, add a group member, actually he's already a member of that group. Let's say we remove Bob from the group there, and we can go look at it again, and then we can see that uh, Bob here, I, I bet this is the one I've already demoed earlier. Let's see, is he still in there? Yeah, he's already been deleted, so <clears throat> uh, it would update his delete date. So what, what are we getting at here? What we can do then is we can say for each one of those members, uh, we can go through here and uh, take a look. So what this report then shows me is these are all of my privileged groups backup operators, domain admins, administrators, enterprise admins, all those special groups. And here's a list, if I scroll to the right, who are the members that have been added or removed from those groups within a date range. So I can filter on that um, property over here. First originating create time is not what we're looking for. We're looking for last originating change time, which tells me that this attribute, this user was uh, added or removed on this date. So this is just PowerShell objects filtering, right? So I can just filter that now and run that once a day, once every six hours, put it in my monitoring tools, and filter on all my privileged groups, filter on that date, and I can get an email now around the clock anytime somebody's been added or removed from a privileged group. Does that sound like a good idea? How many of you get notifications on privileged group changes? All right, for the rest of you that don't have your hand in the air, this is a free, no, uh, no frills way to do that with just a couple lines of PowerShell. And this is all documented out on my blog. Uh, so the, the code is out there for you to get publicly. I'll give you that URL here in a minute. So what I did was I just took all that code and put it into a function. And the function just has a uh, domain controller parameter and how many hours in the history you want to look. And it'll go grab all your protected members protected groups, enumerate through all their members, and see which ones have been added or changed in the last X hours. So that's a handy way to go drill into that. Now, where I want to spend more time is on ACL changes. Somebody has granted themselves access to something else in Active Directory that you weren't aware of. Probably ought to check on that too, shouldn't we? So uh, by default, in the schema somewhere, there are default permissions defined for all the objects. That'd be kind of painful uh, to go actually delta all those to see what's, because over the life of a directory, it's going to be really messy to figure that out. But I want to show you a way to look at this. So using that same thing, get AD replication attribute metadata, um, how many of you use get ACL? All right. Yeah, you're working with looking at the permissions on an object. Did you know that getACL actually works against Active Directory objects? When you get that AD drive letter, you can do a getACL to see what are the permissions on an AD object. So what we can do then, the ACL on an AD object is stored in a property called NT Security Descriptor. So look, thinking about what we just looked at with the group changes, now we can filter the metadata of every object in the Active Directory to see which ones have had an ACL change in the last 24 hours or the last week. 
Sound interesting? Yeah, so now we can actually go look and see who has been delegating access in the environment recently and get a report of that. So what we're going to do then is we're going to get a list. Now, you need to be careful here. Grabbing a list of every object in the directory, that's going to be, uh, yeah, you'll be there a while. So instead, what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to filter on OUs. We'll start there. So I'm just going to get a list of OUs. And for each OU, I'm going to grab the replication metadata of that OU to see if there have been any changes to the NT security descriptor. And then I'm going to sort that in descending order. And so when I look into this data, I see that the HR OU, let's zoom in there. So the HR OU on April 1st of all days had a permission change. Now the rest of these OUs, this is my lab, so it's been a long time since anybody's touched these. That was April 1st of 2014, wow. Yeah, that's been a while. All right, so uh, let's, let's make a change then. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, that's when created. I apologize. Let's look at the proper attribute here. Let's scroll across to the last originating change. That's actually the date we want. There we go. That's the one. That's 4-6-2016. So right there I can see the last originating change on that ACL was the 6th. That was this week. Somebody changed access to the HROU. So what do you think we ought to do? Let's go look at the access for the HROU, but there's a problem with that. Let's, let's see what the problem is. Uh, what I can do then is say, all right, here's all of the ACEs that have been updated in the last amount of time. Let's say within the last 90 days here. So then what we will do is we'll look at, here's the HROU in Coho Vineyard. All right, so let's, let's get on down to see the actual permissions now. So what we can do is I'm going to do a quick little do -si do to query the property names for the permissions out of the schema so that we're not looking at GUIDs. That makes it easier to see the permissions. And we're going to look at objects with change permissions. And so here's our list. And actually, let me skip down one more section. Here we go. So permissions that were changed. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say, OK, here's a list of all the objects. And why did that give me nothing? Oh, OK. I just grab the data analysis now grid view there we go so here we go here's the HROU in the top of the list and I see the change originated on the CVDCR2 and if I scroll across let me zoom in here I want you to see what we're looking at I know this is a lot of data but everything we want is right here so let's take a look. I'm going to zoom in and I see these are the named permissions that are applied to that OU and it will tell me what's inherited, what's not inherited, generic read, write for user computers and groups, things like that in the OU. And as I scroll across, I will see here are the account names that are granted access to that and there's good guy. But here's the problem. The, every one of these are currently on that ACL. We don't know which one was changed. We just know that this is the current ACL. We don't know which piece of the ACL was changed, which ACE individually was added or removed. So I'm going to cheat. I'm going to cheat and show you another way we can look at that. This is the piece that I, I woke up about 6 a.m. after a full <laughs> night of conference sleep. And uh, I thought, I need to do something else to really take this to the next level. So two years ago here, I did a presentation on Active Directory snapshots. Some of you are nodding your head. Most of you have probably never heard of Active Directory snapshots. It was a feature we introduced in Server 2008. And you think, wait a minute, snapshots, Active Directory? I thought we were never supposed to snapshot Active Directory, right? Well, that's VM snapshots. This is the actual database. There's a feature in NTDS Util where you can do a volume shadow copy of just the Active Directory database and logs and keep that and then mount it 
into memory on a different port and query historical AD values. Pretty cool, huh? So now we got this prior state of Active Directory and the current state of Active Directory. Well, somebody I know happened to write a module to do all that for you. So you don't have to type all those long, crazy commands, all right? So out on the blog, it's uh, called Old Snap. Active Directory Attribute Recovery. Yes, Old Snap. So what I've got is a uh, function library here with my uh, snapshots. And in this function library, I have some functions here like, um, let's see, we've got a... So Ashley? Yes. These guys never bothered to audit something, but they did do an AD snapshot. Well, okay. All right. I'm glad you asked the question. No, right. I just want to make sure it's following the story. No, they never did the. They never did a snapshot. <laughs> oh snap. That's oh snap. Exactly. <laughs> right. Okay. They didn't do the snapshot. That would have been amazing. <laughs> it would have been amazing. It would have made this very. I know like five people who ever done eighty snapshots. <laughs> right. Right. So so my part of my role here is to tell you to go start using snapshots in your environment because you can do. You don't have to buy some third-party popular product to do attribute level recovery. You can do it for free with this function library on my blog. All right. So you can do free attribute level restores, copying the data back out of a good copy of AD when somebody blew all the email addresses out. I know some of you have been there. <laughs> all right. So uh, I've got a snapshot here that I took. Um, in my environment. Here's the last snapshot I just did today. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount this snapshot. So yes, they didn't have a snapshot there, but the moral of the story is go make snapshots and schedule them. It's all documented on my blog. So what's happening here is we're actually mounting a, a utility DSA main.exe. I'm giving it a port 33389 that nobody's using right now. And now when I look at my snapshots, I'll see that it's mounted this exposed name here into this dollar snap folder. So it's actually temporarily restored a copy of an older Active Directory database and logs. So I've got that mounted on a separate port. And now I can query the live AD and the history AD and compare the results. And I have created some functions here for you that you can query a, an object and give it a list of attributes, and it'll rewrite those attributes back into production copy. All right, so free recovery, yeah. This might be kind of hard to answer, but I'm just curious, like, what's the general like size of something like that? I mean, if you had, I mean, is it huge or is it, I mean, relatively easy to keep that kind of stuff? I mean, small. Yeah, it's it's pretty small, but you do want in my article, I give you some guidance around keeping that cleaned up. You don't want it to get out of hand. Just determine how many you want to keep. So today I wrote a new function in this module called compare AD object ACL. And I pass it in an OU path because HR was the OU where the attribute or the uh, permission change happened. And so I want to compare that OU ACL between what's historical and what's right now. So when I run this, it dumps out a list of permissions. Here's a permission that was removed. Oh, look at this. Somebody removed HR admins from the HROU. And they, uh, I guess that's it. Looks like they just removed the HR admins was the change that they made. Uh, I, I could probably update my snapshot to see the other changes as well. But anyway, um, the only challenge here is that I have to manage, I haven't built the logic in yet, but you have to manage the date that the snapshot was taken against the date that the change happened. Make sure you get those date windows set correctly so you can go view the actual changes that were there. So that will allow you then to take a snapshot and view what was in place before somebody made the change. So I can go, it's like a time machine to look at my directory and see what was there before Joe Jr. Admin came in and fixed everything. You've had Joe Jr. Admin come in and fix things in your directory, <laughs> right? So you got to go put, go refix them, you know. So 
now that I've done, I've, I've looked in there, I found that I'm just going to dismount that database mounted in memory and this little LDP icon down at the bottom will go away and then that is now unmounted, that snapshot is gone. So that's the, the way that you can do it, but it does require you to be prepared and take snapshots on a scheduled basis in your environment. Um, what about deleted users? Uh, let's go ahead and delete these two guys if they're, yeah. And let's go take a look then. Uh, let me skip through here. ACL changes for cycle bin. Here we go. So back in the day before the recycle bin, you delete an object, it gets tombstoned, and then there was uh, Mark Rusinovich's tool that you could put the object back and it looks really beat up when it comes back, but it's just got the SID enough to really preserve the identity. And so you don't have to go reset all the permissions, but it loses everything else essentially. Now that we've got the recycle bin, uh, we don't have that concern because now we have the recycle bin. Depending on what interval of your tombstone lifetime was set when you implement it, it determines how many. Usually it's modern systems, it's 180 days, you've got the recycle bin. Then after that, you've got the tombstone for another 180 days. So potentially a year, theoretically, to get an object back. So the problem is uh, when you query an active directory, in the deleted objects <coughs> container. So if I look at the get ad domain, there's a property on get ad domain that tells me where the deleted objects container is. I find that exact property here. Deleted objects here and Coho Vineyard is my sample domain today. So I'm going to uh, pick that deleted objects container. So the other thing I was thinking was, hey, what if the hackers deleted some accounts or deleted some data in Active Directory that I want to go inspect. So let's take a look. I'm going to look at that deleted objects container here and I'm going to set that as the search base for my query. That's where I'm going to start my query. But when you're querying deleted objects, you have to include this parameter, include deleted objects. Because normally those are hidden by default. So I'm going to view those deleted objects and grab those into a variable called deleted objects and then I'm going to sort them by modified. But the problem I had here, and let's see, there we go. And so you get the Dell thing in the, uh, in the name and all that. There's a last known parent attribute as well in here that gets populated when they're deleted. Uh, the problem is that basically there's, there are some date fields in here, but there's no good date field to tell me when it was deleted when or where that delete originated. So what I want to do then is look at the metadata just like we've looked at everything else. Now I can see which domain controller initiated that delete putting it in the recycle bin and then go look at the logs on that DC for that time period to see who was making the change. All right, so that's, that's the way we track it back. We use the replication metadata to find which DC originated the change, then we go look at the security log on that DC to see where it was. Now, most likely these security logs are rolling pretty frequently, so you would have to have some type of uh, event log collection, forwarding, something going on in your environment to, to be able to search those historically. So what I could do here would be uh, to run through, and let's take a look at with the metadata here put that in the grid view. And so now I've got deleted objects, when created and when deleted, right here. All right, so that shows me when the object was deleted. And what that's pulling back is it's a calculated value based on that metadata for the change date on the object. It says this is the last change was putting it in the recycle bin, so I know that's the date it was deleted. And so I can now see a dated list of what things were deleted in descending order from today and then go look at the event window, those date ranges that are suspect and see were there things that were wholesale deleted by the hackers in that window. Anecdotally, while I was uh, surfing through this company's directory data, I found a, an actual account with the name hacker. <laughs> Turns out there's a user in Europe with the last name of Hacker. <laughs> so they were legit. 
Now, uh, this script, I actually was PowerShell Saturday in Charlotte several years ago. Mike Robbins, I think, came up to me after the event, and I'd done some talk about Active Directory, and he says, man, I've got this problem where uh, this guy's been in the company for 20 years, and he's been in every department. He's been added to every group, and I don't know which groups he needs to... He's basically a domain admin at this point. <laughs> he's got access to everybody's data because we never took him out of all those old groups. Everybody can identify with that situation. So how can I find that group history mystery? How can I figure that out? So I wrote this little thing with this attribute metadata commandlet. <clears throat> And what it does is it's going to show me for this user, let's go look at every group they're a member of and find the date that they were added to that group. So here we see for this user, he was added to manufacturing in 2013, accounting in 2013, HR in 2013, 2011 he was added to legal and some other test group in there. Obviously, this is just a tiny little lab environment, but in your real world, you'll have, you know, 40 groups in there, and you'll be able to see using this data, then going back forensically to see when they were added to every one of these groups they're a member of. Is that handy? All right. So that's called the group history mystery. Yeah. I ran into something with this before, where I can't remember why but it was limited to the last thousand changes that have been made on a group. Have you run into something like that? First I've heard of it. Okay, I, I need to research it further. The okay. Deleted uh, metadata will disappear after a while and give the life cycle. Right, right. So the deleted metadata will disappear. These are the ones that are still active members of the groups. Yeah, what I was thinking yeah. I ran into was a group that I have that has almost everybody in the company in it. And when I looked up the metadata for it, I could only find the last thousand changes or last thousand oh, additions to That's it. probably going to be a limitation on the metadata attribute field how much it can hold I'm going to guess for a group of that size yeah so it's binary data actually um, Brandon Shell BS on posh he uh, he wrote uh, before this commandlet existed he wrote something that would actually it was a very manly function that would go parse all the binary data in that attribute and give you the data but now we have a commandlet to do it so yeah it's, it's a lot easier now does this require domain admin rights for some of these to read these attributes? Probably so. Because if you're looking at delegated administration in some of these places, you're going to have to have domain admins. Because I'm thinking you know, every user has read to just about anything in the directory, but there are going to be places where they don't have it. So, yeah, you probably should use a, an elevated account to do this. Yeah. So, a, a smart malicious actor is going to do as little as possible. <laughs> little right. adjustment to the structure as possible. So, right. So if the holy grail is like finding these, uh, the goal, of the holy grail would be like finding a service account, Kerberos ticket hash, or even the Kerberos generating account. Right. The Kerberos ticket generating, if it's KRBG, whatever, mm -hmm. BGP, that hash. Can we use these commandments to dig in and try to see those tickets or who's generating them? Is there an account that's generating more? You could look at the KRBTGT and look at the attributes on it and see if those, um, if the version stamp has been incremented for that, uh, like this, the hash and things like that on the password attributes. Now, which version is it? When you do the, um, the prep on the environment in one of the recent versions of AD, it actually uh, changes that password so don't be surprised if you see uh, a change in there from the original value it's supposed to happen um, you gotta change it twice to change the hash or something. I, don't, I don't remember uh, but yeah it's I haven't looked at it in detail but it, it's in there so we got just a couple minutes let me finish up here and then we will uh, take some more questions so uh, last up is a GP link metadata um, I'm not going to take the time to display it, but basically uh, part of the clues that we got from one of the other security vendors that were on site with this customer was that they thought there was some suspicious group policy activity during the event window. And they wanted to see what group policy changes had happened in the environment. So now imagine I've got an OU object 
that OU object has a GP link attribute. The GP link attribute is a string that holds the GUID of every policy that's linked to it. So now I can just go through all the OUs, look at the metadata, and see which GP links historically have been versioned recently, telling me that one of the policies linked to it has recently changed. Again, I can't see specifically which one. So I found some policy activity on an OU, and I could see, though, that it looked like normal behavior because there was a test OU where they had developed the policy, and I could see that it had been unlinked from that OU and linked to a production OU, and they went back and correlated it with their change logs, and it was a scheduled change, it was normal. So I could not corroborate the story of the vendor saying, hey, there's some suspicious GPO activity because I looked at it all and it looked fine. So you can even take that, and there's a whole blog post on just that piece as well, if you want that. So let me uh, wrap here. So, where can I find these scripts? Go out to aka.ms slash ad forensics, and that is a link to the blog feed that has all of my posts that are tagged with forensics related topics. So, you can go check all of those, aka.ms slash ad forensics. Um, also, in my Microsoft Virtual Academy video series, I have eight. Uh, video segments on MVA about uh, doing Active Directory with PowerShell. Uh, the fourth segment in that is all about forensics where I talk about some of these same topics, but I don't, I didn't go into the same level of detail that I did today, but it's all there for you, the replication attribute metadata and things like that. Also, Microsoft is doing a lot in the area of cybersecurity. I've been on a few of these uh, covert dispatches myself where you're, I, they don't even tell me the name of the customer. I, I, I showed up, they said, here's the address, I'll meet you there. <laughs> it, it was like I was volunteering to be abducted or something. And, and we're gonna go in this secret door and it's a need to, and it's like cloak and dagger stuff. They don't even, in our, in our systems, we don't even track the name of the customer. We use a fake name, all this, because it's very confidential when we're dealing with cybersecurity investigations. So we have a full team of PFEs and MCS consultants that specialize in cyber engagements. If your company has been hacked, if you get that call, if you become aware of it, please call us because some of the knee-jerk reactions that you take as soon as you find out that you've been hacked, the things that you think are the best thing to do are not. And we have trained experts that will help you investigate and remediate your situation. So please uh, contact us. We also, there are a lot of vendors in this space, and I'm not trying to just say that we're the best, right? Be but we are. Because <laughs> we have special tools in the world that nobody else has. Because we're Microsoft. We have lots of special data that they simply don't have. Please call us if you have a cyber incident. Uh, Satya Nadella at the end of last year did a special press conference with uh, some people in DC about cybersecurity. The, the things that are really hard to track is when you're looking at millions of event log entries across domain controllers for the last year, how do I know what's normal activity and what's malicious activity? We're using machine learning to study event logs and identify abnormal activity in your environment. So we're doing a lot of research in this space. We have a lot of experts to help you with your cybersecurity needs. There, and so I mentioned at the beginning that you really need to make sure that you have your auditing set up correctly. Here are some blog links, uh, particularly to the Ask PFE Platforms blog that uh, have some uh, expert advice from some of my peers on how to properly audit your Active Directory environment so that you don't have to worry about these other methods to try to find the data when it's too late. So, closing then. Don't be that company. Don't put clear text passwords in a spreadsheet. It happens. People, these companies end up in the news. Audit your Active Directory environment the right way. Set up alerts. Take this sample code, even if 
you know, most people are always complaining about IT budgets. This is PowerShell. Do it for free. Use these scripts and set up alerts in your environment. Learn this replication attribute metadata commandlet. It's going to be your best friend. Cybersecurity is a huge topic. This is just a very small part. There's so much more we can do with um, cyber forensics in Active Directory. This is just to get you started there. So check out the new machine learning stuff I mentioned from Microsoft. And if your company gets hacked, please call us. And I don't say that to, to put other vendors in the bad light. It's just that we have experts that this is all they do. And they live on site with customers for months, helping them recover from these terrible scenarios. And uh, finally, if this has helped you, please send me a tweet, uh, just so my boss knows that I'm actually not uh, golfing, but I'm helping people in the real world. Thank you. All right. I have business cards up here if anybody wants them.